Well, it's my last day here in Austin, Texas at Fantastic Fest, and tonight they played a second secret screening, which turned out to be the new reboot of Hellraiser. So does this new version of Hellraiser perfectly balance pleasure and pain, or is this just another waste of good suffering? What's up guys and welcome to my early review of Hulu's upcoming Hellraiser. It's going to be debuting on October 7th, so keep your eyes peeled and definitely check it out. But this was finally <laughs> a secret screening at Fantastic Fest that was made for me. There was a lot of different rumors of what this movie could have been. Glass Onion was a very popular choice. Of course, there was some Halloween Ends whispers. And then it ended up being the new version of Hellraiser, which was just very cool because I am one of a very select few people that actually are going to be able to watch this film in theaters. So another Fantastic Fest experience that is going to be something I'll remember probably the rest of my life. With that being said, Hellraiser is a franchise that I've never been a gigantic fan of. Even the original film, which I would say is the best of the franchise, is not a movie that I have a lot of deep-seated love for, certainly don't have any nostalgia for, and I don't think it's an absolute classic, though I understand why a lot of people find it that way. The rest of the franchise, however, it's a very low bar for a movie to come around and say, well, that's the best Hellraiser I've seen in a long time. But ever since I heard this thing announced, the fact that we were getting Clive Barker as a producer, he was actually going to have quite a bit of creative input in here. It was announced that it was going to be directed by David Bruckner, who is nothing but a perfect track record for me so far. His segment on the original VHS is my favorite segment in that entire film, one of my favorite horror anthology shorts, period. He had The Ritual a couple of years ago, which I thought was an awesome little monster flick. And then just last year, we had The Night House, which was a really cool and creepy kind of a haunted house film. So his name gave me a lot of faith. And the fact that they were going to be going back, starting from scratch and doing a whole new continuity with a brand new pinhead, some new Cenobites, and taking a different approach to this franchise gave me a lot of hope that maybe just maybe we can get a Hellraiser film that I would tell you is actually a damn good movie. So starting off with the positives for Hellraiser, the main thing that I loved about this new version is that finally we have a Hellraiser film that realizes that we are all there to see Pinhead and the Cenobites. Pinhead and the Cenobites are the central plot of this movie. The looming threat of the Cenobites is the star of the show. Even in the original Hellraiser, they're kind of an afterthought. They're something that is like the secondary force, the secondary villain that comes in in the third act. And the rest of this franchise just could not figure out what the hell to do with Pinhead. He just kind of showed up as like a cameo every once in a while. This movie was made and the story was framed to where the Cenobites and Pinhead are the star of the show. They are the reason that we are here and they are the central figure to the plot of this movie. And that was just so refreshing. It seems like we should not have to beg for a Hellraiser movie to focus on the, the villains that are like the poster childs of this entire franchise. But I'll be damned if we have not gotten 10 or 12 of these fucking things that just decides to, eh, we'll get to Pinhead eventually. All throughout this film, the plot centering around the lore of the Lament configuration and the looming threat of the Cenobites and just introducing them piece by piece and showing some returning Cenobite designs that look great, showing quite a few brand new designs that look great, creating that atmosphere of kind of blending the real world with their hell dimension. And like I said, that looming threat of eventual confrontation with Pinhead and the Cenobites, that is this Hellraiser. And I love the fact that pretty much most, if not all of what I saw on screen was practical as far as the gore, as far as the creature designs. I'm sure they use CGI to touch it up here and there. And I'm sure some of the chains especially was CG, but it was done in a way where you couldn't immediately tell it was CG. It was a perfect blend. There's a good amount of gore in this movie. It's very effective. It's certainly, um, it's hard to say that it's extreme after seeing Terrifier 2 a couple of days ago, but when you got skin being peeled off of people and organs being shown and bones snapping. It, it's got a good amount of carnage candy. It's got the amount that you would expect in a Hellraiser film without being gratuitous. It's there to serve the story and serve what's going on, not be the main focus of the film. Uh, and I loved all the Cenobite designs. I love the new look for Pinhead. I know I love the new look for Chatterer and quite a few of the new Cenobite designs 
designs I thought were pretty badass and instantly iconic as well. Like seeing the new creature designs, the new sickness that they can come up with with the Cenobites was kind of the appeal for me watching the first four or so Hellraiser films. It's kind of like, what do they got in the bag now? What new tricks are they going to show us? And they really did utilize this movie to pay homage to some of our favorite Cenobites while giving us some really unique and fucked up new monsters. And I really enjoyed the story in this one too. I won't give too many details, but essentially you have this lead character who is battling with drug addiction. She gets a hold of the Lament configuration. And in this film, the whole plot centers around the lore of that box. And it has multiple forms and requires sacrifices. So you have Pinhead and the Cenobites that are kind of trying to lure this girl in to get her to use this box more and more and get her to get into situations to where the box can take more people, eventually leading to something happening whenever it reaches its final configuration. And just like I said before, with the Cenobites being the central figure of the plot, I love the fact that the box is now something that's not just a cool prop. It's actually integral and central to the issues going on and to the main character's plight and is basically the device that the entire plot of the movie wraps around. David Bruckner did a damn good job directing this. You can tell that he has a lot of love for the original film and the original franchise. You can feel the collaboration with Clive Barker, with the lore and with the, the approach that they took that certainly feels the most akin to that first film than any of the other dozen or so Hellraiser movies that we have gotten since that original film. And he achieved a really great mix to where I think pretty much anybody who is a Hellraiser fan, even casual fans of this franchise, there's so much in this movie that is going to be love letters to that previous incarnation, while at the same time, he makes his own stamp. He takes it in his own direction. He makes this movie his own. This is not going to be one of those things where people start debating, did Clive Barker really direct this movie? No. David Bruckner makes his own stamp on this and takes it in his own direction. And while I think that pretty much everybody that watches this is going to agree that this is probably the best Hellraiser movie since the original. I think there's going to be quite a few people that might actually prefer this to the original, just depending on what exactly in the story you're looking for. Me personally, this movie gave me pretty much anything I could have asked for from a Hellraiser film. And finally, I got to praise Jamie Clayton's performance as the Hell Priest, as Pinhead. Again, just like with David Bruckner, there is enough there that is so signature pinhead and so signature hell priest that it's not some wildly different interpretation of the character that feels foreign, but she makes this character her own. She takes it in directions that is very different than what Doug Bradley brought to the character. The design itself is very different than the Doug Bradley pinhead and it's very gnarly and it just stands out. As soon as she shows up on screen, it makes an impact. I love the way that they modulate her voice uh, it's, it's just a very different flavor and Pinhead is one of those characters that is so iconic and Doug Bradley is one of those actors that is just so married to a role that all of us celebrate that there's going to be a lot of fans that unfortunately are not going to give this a chance or not going to give Jamie Clayton a chance just because they're stubborn. I mean, you can set your watch to how the internet reacts to movies and moves like this, but for those that actually watch it and give it a chance, Jamie Clayton does what so few people can do stepping into such an iconic role that is so known for being portrayed by one person and completely make it their own while totally respecting the legacy of what came before. What is it you pray for? As far as mixed elements, I do think that the movie takes a bit too much time to get to the carnage. Now, uh, a Q&A after the film, David Bruckner was talking about that, that being a very conscious choice. They wanted to kind of build up to that. They didn't want to essentially blow their load too early in the movie and then not be able to match that kill or that gore scene. And I think that they achieved what they came out to do. But there's going to be some people that just expect carnage from start to finish with a Hellraiser film that waiting till about halfway through the film for your first real kill might test a few people's patience. And I'm kind of on the middle on it. That's why it's in the mixed category. I appreciate that approach. I appreciate the fact that you're going to do a Hellraiser movie that doesn't just completely hinge yourself on gore scenes and people being skinned. You have a lot more to say than that. But at the same time, the carnage candy whore in me could have used a little bit more. And on to the negatives, and these are not 
a major issue, but I still don't think that the Hellraiser franchise has found a really great protagonist. Now, Kirsty Cotton is a very interesting character. She's never been one of my favorite final girls. A lot of people probably are screaming blasphemy at that, but she's just never really been one of those characters that I really hinge on, I really identify with, and really are like invested in. And this being a reboot, we don't really get a character that fills that gap for me, in my opinion. You have the central lead character, a very good acting, and you have the surrounding characters, and, and they're all pretty good as well. And they're somewhat there to be cannon fodder throughout the film, and there are some of them that do have genuine relationships that are part of the, the plot that's going on with this girl. But I just don't feel like, for how iconic and how standout and just how visually mesmerizing the Cenobites are that we have ever had a person on the opposite side of the coin that balances that out. We don't have a Tommy Jarvis in this franchise. We don't have a Nancy or a Laurie Strode in this franchise. And so that's the one thing that if we do get a sequel to this, and I hope that we do, that I hope that they kind of Give us that character. I, I think that we need somebody that is as badass and is as memorable and is a fan favorite that could match up to Pinhead. But overall, guys, I really enjoyed this. I will tell you that it's easily the best one since the original, and I got to think on it a bit. It might end up being my favorite of this franchise, but I am a casual fan of the originals, so keep that in mind. Regardless, Hellraiser fans, you have a serious treat in store for you here in about a week on Hulu. So be sure to check it out. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed this, please click over here for all of my Hellraiser reviews. And I'm also gonna put my Hellraiser ranking up here. Like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.